All right, everyone, what's up? This is Dave with another exciting tutorial. And today I'd like to talk about Z Modeler. Okay, so if you're comfortable like modeling in Blender or Maya, um, 3D Studio Max with extrusions, this is gonna be kind of a similar approach to that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead and create a cube. So I'm gonna click on, on Tool, Simple Brush, Cube 3D. And then if I drag it in here, hit Edit, okay? Now, it's kind of weird, and it might look kind of weird like this, so I might have to turn on perspective there. Now it looks like a normal cube, okay? Now what's weird about this is that I can't work on it right away. So if I open up geometry, it's not really my normal divide and everything. So the way that I work on it kind of uh, normally is I just click on Make Poly Mesh 3D, okay? Now I can see that if I go to geometry, it's got my normal kind of subdivisions. If I look at the um, polygons, this is what it looks like, okay? Now, that is, uh, it's kind of weird how there's a pole on the top and the bottom and how it's divided up so much. So the way that I correct that is I come down here and I go to initialize and I'm going to say Q cube. I'm going to click on that. Now you can see that it's um, got a, a two resolution, right? Now, if I put this to one and one, so if I put this to one, one, and one, and go to Q cube, I can see that each one now only has a side like that. Or I could put maybe Y resolution. Let's see what happens if I put that to two. And you can see what that looks like. Okay, I think maybe let's try this to two. Ah, there we go, that's kind of cool. Um, and I can see here, this is my um, kind of my perspective, so I can kind of tell which way I'm facing. Okay, so let's say if I like that. Now I can say, um, Okay, that looks good. And I have this, everything looks normal. So now I can go ahead and get started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go down to Z Modeler, okay? And now if I, if I press X, you can see that it's gonna mirror it. And if I hover over a face, I'm going to hold down the space bar and I get the Z Modeler actions. Okay, so just the simplest one, I'm going to go to extrude, and then it's going to say, hey, what do you want to do? And then what do you want to do it to? Okay, I'm going to say a single polygon. So once again, extrude to a single polygon. So now if I click on this, I'm going to be extruding. Okay, and if I didn't like those colors, I could turn off poly F, but then I can't see the wireframe. So if I turn off fill, notice there's two buttons in here. If I turn off fill, now I can lose that color, okay? Now watch this. So if I, once again, extrude single poly, if I hover over it, if I go like this, you can see that it extruded out that far. And if I just tap, it's going to duplicate exactly how far it extruded out, okay? So let's say I'm gonna do maybe one more. Let's say if I wanted um, multiple kind of things to extrude up, so what I could do is I could just kind of extrude that up a little bit like that. Now, instead of measuring that, I could just tap, tap, and I can see that it's exactly the same, okay? Now, something else that I might wanna do is if I hover over the face, hold the space bar, I could say inset and a single polygon. So now if I click, I'm insetting, and you guessed it, if I hit tap, tap, it's going to, uh, you know, kind of have that exact same inset. Now, once again, if I hover over a face, and then I could say, um, you know, bridge or bevel or any of these other things here, um, there's a lot of things that you can kind of play with and look at. Maybe I'll go back to extrude, and then I'll kind of bring this up and just tap, tap. Now, you don't have to do that. I mean, I could just extrude, and then I could extrude this one a different, I could extrude this one different. So I feel like that tapping feature is just kind of a neat way that ZBrush kind of keeps it so you can, you know, kind of make um, edits fairly quickly that are the same. Now let's look at some other things here. So I could say, hmm, I want to extrude what? I want to extrude maybe um, a flat island. Okay, let's see what that does. So if I'm over here and if I bring this out, Okay, why did it grab all of that? Well, if you think about this, a flat island, you can see it's this would be considered an island, and this is considered in there because it's it's a flat 
along that. So if I extrude like that, I can see it's extruding a flat island. And if I brought this, yeah, you probably guessed it. Okay, it's bringing that out right there. Okay, so if you wanted to kind of extrude more than one face, okay, now if I did flat island, I'm guessing it would grab all that plus this. Aha, there we go. Yeah, that's cool. What if I grab the bottom as flat island? Aha, yep, grabbed all that. Okay, so really cool way that you can do that. And once again, if I do that, you could kind of play with um, all of these. I'm gonna just maybe try island. Let's see what that does. Okay, so it looks like that's doing the whole thing. I mean, if I had another shape, um, I could do that as well. Or it looks like that would only do that one particular shape. Now, we've only looked at a single, like over the face. But if I hover over an edge, I'm gonna get a different menu, okay? You can see things like inset, and I could say a single edge loop. So if I do that, now if I click on an edge, that's what it's gonna do, okay? And just like before, if I now, if I click, I can click as many times as I want. Um, I have to click over the edge loop, or over the edge, I should say, because if I click over the face, it's gonna do whatever it is. I'm just gonna put this back to extrude a single poly. But if I go to edge, inset, now watch this, if I go to multiple edge loops, okay, let's see what it does here. So now I can click, and if I drag up or down, you can see it's determining how many edge loops I'm adding. So really fast, really cool. I feel like that's similar to kind of how um, Blender is. Um, and Maya feels a little bit more clunky when you're adding a bunch of edge loops. But I feel like this is really cool in ZBrush. I think a lot of people maybe don't even realize that you can do this um, or just don't really use Blender all that much for um, this kind of work because I feel like we're kind of used to thinking, well, if I need this type of hard surface modeling, I could do it in, you know, my 3D program like Maya or Blender or 3D Studio Max or whatever. Um, but it's, it is in here. It is in here. It's kind of hidden, but I feel like it's, it's pretty cool. Okay. Or I could go to a vertex and now you can see that I get other options as well. Now, my point isn't to go through all of these and kind of like show you what each one does. I feel like what I want you to do is get used to the understanding of, okay, if I hover over a face, I can choose an action and then I can choose what do I want that action to do it to. In other words, a target. Then same with this, I have the action whoop, over an edge. So if I have an action, I could bevel, I could bridge, I could do any of these things, even extruding uh, to what? A single edge loop or multiple edge loops? And um, and then just kind of play with that. Kind of explore it, see what you think. Uh, leave, you know, cool things in the comment, like, hey, try this uh, swivel on a single edge loop. I, you know, I have no idea. I haven't even played with all of these. But um, let me know what you think is the coolest one. And if you've thought this was helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe for more 3D videos every week and in all the different software packages. So hopefully you found this helpful. Enjoy your day. I'll see you next time. Thank you.